Okay, uh, this is a joint work with Simon Kistose. He was a former PhD student, and Kenneth Carson. He is coming from. He is in Norway, Oslo. So I will say something uh, first about the bi-domain model and its motivation. It's coming from biology, and then what we put, uh, where we put in the noise, and so on. And then I say something about the existence. Okay, and uniqueness. We don't have. Yeah, we have uniqueness and then outline of the proof. So what is the bi-domain in a uh, model? It comes uh, in some sense from the heart, which comes from these small uh, cells, which have a boundary in, in the middle. And this kind of omega is this, uh, the boundary of the inner. So if I look at the cell, it has an outer space, exterior space, that's that. And inner space, this is this here, and the gamma m, which is more or less the boundary. And in fact, uh, what one is interested is, is in the difference of the uh, transmembrane potential, which is uh, ui minus ue, and comes from the boundary in 2r. And yeah, the next is, is uh, conductivity is difference and can be non-smooth, more or less. And, the, and here, the omega is more or less, uh, um, in biology, they call it, they take an omega for many things, is more this uh, domain here. So what is one doing it? This is another kind of uh, picture to see it better. So this is one cell. Here's the omega i, the inside. Here's the exide. Here's the common uh, boundary. And one knows that on the boundary, one has this equation. And this is more or less a balance equation. And this is coming from uh, a nonlinear equation. And then uh, the, in the interior, one has these two equations, which are more or less yeah, elliptic equation, nothing else. And then one has some boundary equation given here. So what is, uh, what, uh, what is one doing? And here one has this kind of eons, which can be also some random field or one put in the randomness. Now, um, no, that's not the random. Uh, uh, this, uh, this kind of um, the conductivity is following more or less a nonlinear equation, which is more, uh, which is comes uh, from the, I think I have this Huxley model and other, th other things. So the procedure, how one comes, this was a macroscopic model. And then via homogenization, get one, a mac, uh, from the microscopic model, which I just described, one get the macroscopic model. And here one identify uh, the, itself, the omega i, the omega e, and the boundary. And by homogenization, one gets a system which will, where one has an intercellular domain. The same omega described the extracellular domain. And this is called more or less a bi-domain uh, model. Um, yeah, what, what is interesting for the mathematician is more or less to look what are the resulting equation. And this is, uh, here is the difference, and the difference is uh, the time derivative is given by some nonlinearity here in this here, plus uh, depending on V and W. And the W is also governed by some simple equation. Uh, ordinary differential equation. And here one has uh, an elliptic equation depending on the intracellular uh, potential and here on the extracellular uh, uh, potential. And here is more or less a coupling of uh, this is some more outer noise of this equation. And one is more uh, uh, interested in a, I say, uh, a solution of uh, these four entities, V, W, U, I, and U, E. That's what Sean uh, one wants to get. And uh, one can, uh, for the nonlinear, we have uh, the, these kind of models. And I think the most uh, 
people know these kind of models. Here you have the third part tense, and this is somewhere linear. And here you have just a difference, a linear difference in G. Here in this model, you have the uh, third potence, and here also. But here you have VW, uh, omega, uh, VW, V times W, and here you have also V times W. And here this gives, uh, this V times W gives really some additional difficulties where we have, uh, where we had to prove it in some other way. And this uh, is a simpler case here. This here is more or less given by here. Here one has a square and here it's also linear. Uh, here some deterministic literature I put a summarize uh, which is given. In fact, we used a more or less this work and then Bieber and Prus. And then we had yeah, this, uh, this um, yeah, and the Savary, Colli, Franzone. There are several nice work to look at. And one is asking in the biological uh, literature, there is, um, how to say, lo a lot of, um, uh, a lot of motivation to give some noise into it and to check what is happening. And um, I just was looking at the literature and um, more or less, uh, Kenneth was interested in what is happening with uh, Levy noise uh, or if jumps are really um, happy, uh, occurring. And uh, so we decided to work on it. And yeah, that was, and there are also given some works where really this Poisson noise was more or less, uh, you say, um, pointed out. And here are some work which I put together to see where they look from the biological point of view, if there is really makes sense to put some noise in and where they have seen there should be differences. Uh, I think, uh, I hope I have not really to introduce much about awesome random measure. I guess most of the people should know it. So that's the kind of Poisson random measure I put in a jump process described by Poisson random measures. And more or less ETO, we described the Poisson random measure. ETO tilde is a compensated process. Dharma is a compensator. Uh, and mu is a Poisson, uh, is more or less a Levy measure. I will be mu in my notation. Um, this equation one can transfer to the following system. That means here is the equation for V and the noise we put in as a multiplicative noise here for the W uh, for the Wiener noise. And then we put some uh, Poisson random measure, a Poissonian noise in this way inside. So uh, this equation for V, one can get a result in two equations, this equation and this equation, and V is more or less uh, the difference. And then this is the equation for V, which is more or less uh, ordinary differential equation. And they all uh, depend on time and on, on space. That means here in W, you do not have an, uh, any diffusion, but you have X and T. And here you have also X and T, but uh, here you have this uh, elliptic operator. Um, what we get, and uh, we get a, the result of existence and uniqueness, and this is more or less the assumption. Uh, maybe I have it uh, before on. One can shift the system, and this is a way of the proof um, that one kick out the interior domain. One can also, because it's symmetric, to kick out the exterior domain and formulate it as an equation from V, depending on the more or less sum ui uh, or, or the difference ui minus ue. And, uh, and then in a second step, uh, as a solving this equation, this coupled equation, and then in a second step to make an ellipt uh, elliptic equation to get from uh, V and ui, uh, u, um, e. No, 
we yeah no you jim it's vice versa so you say for i for you uh, for from v and you e you get u i that is a elliptic equation in the last step so um so one is interested in this kind of operator uh, which is the operator A, which is applied to V, which is then the sum, and it's coming uh, here from this here where one add the conductivity. And we get more or less, it's quite uh, theoretical, all these things. Uh, one is getting some, how to say, strong because we need the existence and well-definedness in H1. So we partly are working in H1, and this gives us more or less um, the condition on the smoothness on uh, sigma. This is the ellipticity constant, and this M and M has also to have, uh, ha will have a lower bound. And C1 coefficient is more or less that we are working in H1. Uh, I think these are quite natural. Uh, assumption for the Wiener noise, which are quite standard. Uh, maybe in H1 we need only boundedness. We do not need any Lipschitz um, condition. And then we got the condition for the Pausen render measure. Maybe what is interested is here we have for K is uh, the first and the second moment. We can relax it a little bit, but not much. And here, when one look it, one has this H gamma two. This in for V, one can using the smoothing. What is here seeing here, also in the Wiener noise. And here uh, for W, this is G two. We can't use any using uh, any smoothing properties of the underlying. We do not have any elliptic operator involved. So. Oh. What is the idea or what is uh, the difference or we had, the, uh, we could show existence and uniqueness for the two cases. And one case is more or less, we have this C psi here. And the second uh, case is we have here the Xi uh, psi eta, no Xi zeta here, this multiplication. So this really gives some two different, oh, two different proofs. Um, and we could uh, fix all models. Uh, these are the additional assumption. But, and here may be the uh, work which is done in the stochastic case, or one can look at. And we, we also use, uh, so they have nice um, estimates about the operator in front involved and how to treat part of the nonlinearity is also taken from this work. Uh, what was the idea? And in fact, here's the result. But the main point was more or less what the, the method, what we used. And in fact, we used the fixed point uh, method. And the idea was where that we fix psi of t. And uh, then, First, we wrote, uh, rewrote it in these two, uh, in these uh, coupled system. So we had a, uh, an equation for V, where we had uh, for V, where we had this elliptic operator, this kind of nonlinearity, and uh, this is also an elliptic operator. And then we had this kind of stochastic noise, and this can be some random perturbation. So here. Uh, and the fixed point is given by the operator. So we took a process psi, and the process psi comes from a certain space, and put it here into the equation. Then we got V and W. This is an equation one can solve by standard methods, more or less. And if one has V and W, we have this kind of elliptic equation, put this V here inside and get U, E. And then we say, okay, T of Psi is this U, E. And yeah, and we, de we define this kind of operator. And uh, if Psi is U, E, then the system above is really equivalent to the system before. Uh, 
what are the steps? So we have an operator, and then we show uh, we had a version of a schauder tichanoff theorem. This is uh, get uh, goes back to a former work with Jonas Tölle, um, where we could show okay if if you have a SPD with certain setting and we use define a fixed point operator, then we have unique, uh, then we have a kind martingale solution. Uh, then we establish pathways uniqueness for the solution. Then we showed by in Yamada Watanabe argument that the solution is indeed a unique strong solution. And uh, then we just uh, have shown or investigated the regularity. So uh, what is a stochastic Schauder theorem? That is, one has more or less uh, here an SPDEs. And here the process in the nonlinear T psi of T can be some perturbation. And then we can take uh, define the operator T, which is, where is the operator T? Yeah, here, it's a V and say, okay, V of Xi is eta, and uh, we have a fixed point, or we, we know a fixed point is given by this here, and if we can show that one has more or less uh, one sort of this equation with nonlinearity. Uh, and in fact, to get a solution or to, to show that there exists a fixed point is more or less, more or less uh, yeah, the chowder tichanoff theorem then had as uh, to find a, a con convex subset. I notated, uh, I called it X of A here, uh, and uh, show that on this convex subset, the operator is continuous, that uh, the operator maps the convex subset into itself. Then one has some compactness here. I used some compact L embedding. And then one need a really big space where one knows uh, that on the compact subset that one is on the uh, score, in our case, in the score hot space. And then one can, uh, can show there exists a filtered probability space um, such that on the pro filtered pro uh, probability space, one can uh, construct a fixed point such that he almost surely this identity holds. Okay, that's more or less the Schauder th uh, Tichanoff uh, theorem. Uh, which is from me and Kelle, Jonas, and maybe how to characterize the convex subset. Uh, one has to characterize in such a way that one can go from one probability space to another one. That means one can only use, in some sense, expectation values or prob uh, the probability. So one has to find some mappings, in some sense. I wrote it here. and and characterize it in this way. And from the mapping theta, for example, one can take the norm or something, they have to be measurable. And uh, the second, what we was using, it's an old work with uh, Martin Andrichard and Andy Bois, uh, where we had shown a Poisson render measure that uh, to get the, or transfer the Yamade Watanabe about uniqueness. And we extended more or less this work first to the variational setting, and secondly, that we can have a Poisson Renner measure and a Wiener noise. I couldn't find really a work which deals with both. Either I got a Poisson Renner measure or I got a Wiener process, but both were not inside this way. Uh, yeah, this was also, uh, and now, one has, uh, one has to find the setting where one can, uh, one can show the compactness and all these things. And this uh, is done here. So we came up with this sp underlying spaces. In fact, um, it's not, uh, this should be, yeah. This is the underlying spaces. So we took L2 uh, in H1, two. Here, this is the underlying spaces and the, with the uh, expectation of the second moment. And we had to put here some lambda. Without the lambda, we couldn't, we couldn't cancel on the left-hand side all the uh, terms. So, and then we took a subspace. It's characterized here in this way. That means uh, nabla xi times uh, the boundary condition, condition 
The norm in that space has to be uh, smaller than a constant. The norm, this kind of norm had to be uh, smaller than the, the other constant. And also these here had to be smaller than a constant. So this was the subset. And this was the space uh, where uh, we took the top a lot, the norm and all these things in. And now, again, the fixed point, I met it the thing. So xi, so via the xi, we get the v here outside. And then we put this here in the equation, we get the u, and then we put it here inside. And then this mapping we had to investigate. And yeah, these are all the points, which all the things are really quite technical, but uh, if one have this xi and look at it as a random perturbation, one can use this all the standard method or uh, the, yeah, what uh, uh, Bay and Webner or something which exists or the SCARPA you have also made on linearity to, to get all the, or to show all these points. Uh, compactness, we could go also, yeah, we could go to that space. So in some sense, we could show compactness, continuity, and uh, head lag on a big space. Then the next thing is we had to show pathwise uniqueness. This we were also able to show. And um, these are really, uh, we had to define the stopping time and until the stopping time we could show and then, uh, yeah, that's more or less standard if I say. And we could show this kind of, am I too quick? No. Uh, assumption of, uh, that X is really a solution with satisfying all the boundary condition. And then we got uh, more or less this estimate. We could even show LP estimate here. But you see here's L2 and we had, could show the finiteness of the gra gradient. So for the first case, one gets really nice things and it's really straightforward. Uh, now to go to the second case, uh, where we had this uh, non-linearity, which was more complicated. Here we had really to introduce stopping time to do something. And uh, once we had to introduce the stopping time in this norm uh, for the phi v, and one C here, if V is larger than two, also for dimension one and two, we could get some existence and uniqueness of the equation. For D equal three, we couldn't show it, uh, um, couldn't show it, but it's more or less, yeah. So these are the stopping times. And then we have done the whole program with, uh, with, respect, uh, with the stopping times. So for each kappa, one can uh, define also an uh, operator, tau kappa. Where's the operator? No. Yeah, here I saw it. We had an operator, tau, tau depending this time on kappa. So um, here we put it inside, then we get the V, and then uh, by, by the V putting in into this uh, elliptic equation, we get the UE also depending on kappa. And so for each kappa, we got the operator. And again, we had to go through this space uh, for these uh, steps. But at this time, we had a stopping time. So we could show existence and uh, existence of the solution and so on, and uniqueness and all these things. So it was not a problem, but with a stopping time. And then, yeah, we applied the schauder tuchanov theorem. And uh, the next is, uh, for each kappa, we got a unique solution. So in some sense, um, so we get really, got really a nice unique uh, solution with the pathwise uniqueness on the original um, probability space. And then we had to extend this local solution as so we had this globalization. That means that we had to find uni uh, that we define this kind of stopping time 
Oh, there is this, is an integral missing. I just see it here. Uh, we had to define this kind of stopping time. Until the stopping time, we know that we have a local solution. And then we had known there exists some, uh, that we have used this kind of cutoff function in such a way that we had known, okay, we will have, if we have a solution, we will have uniform bounds of the cutoff function. And, uh, or at, uh, at the expectation of this and this value. And so we really can um, globalize the solution by standard means. It's more or less uh, was done here in that step, uh, in this step. So um, yeah, this is more or less a step that we have this kind of stopping time. Uh, we say here, there exists a solution on the time until tau k kappa and exist on tau kappa should be here if we have a k, k is a k. Uh, then we define the set and then since we know uh, by Chebyshev inequality uh, and uniform bounds we can say okay this probability is one that's it uh, this is more or less the idea to do it and here, this is quite important that we have uniform bounds in, independent of the cutoff par parameter and get so uh, show the existence of the solution. This was more or less a big idea of the proof. There are much more technical details uh, by it. But uh, I wanted to say by this method, as of the first time I've used it with Jonas Tölle, and we have shown this uh, stochastic Klaus-Meyer system. And this is a recent work that I have together with Mokumye, where we looking at the same method. We have here a coupled system of uh, Stokes. Uh, that is more or less a Stokes system. We couldn't implement the Navier from the Stokes system. This were, we were not uh, able, so we are lo only looking at laminar flow. And this is a, is a chemical, uh, chemotaxa system where we had some Wiener noise here and here. And here we had some porous media uh, noise. And here more or less, we use the same method. The only different, uh, uh, difference is that we couldn't show uniqueness. It means um, for this here, we in dimension we don't have any uniqueness and for this year we don't have couldn't or haven't shown any uniqueness so it's it's a nice method or way to show existence or, or, of a solution and maybe it has the advantage and this is the reason we started if you use a Galerkin method you it's more or less the same we use compactness and so on but you have to show or use the lacking method, which are uh, respecting all these entropy equation or all these uh, that um, to get the uniform bounds. And with this method, you just make a cutoff setting in a nice way that you can existence and solution. And then if you have, if you, if you can put your hands on the solution or you have a solution, even with the cutoff, you can get the uniform bound uniform bounds easier. So that's an advantage, maybe, and has also disadvantage. Okay, so we, what we want to do it, maybe to get the space-time Poissonian noise, this is a quite rough, and we need a certain kind of smoothness. So this is kicked out, and maybe to model, uh, model it some numerics. Okay, thank you for your Attention.